How useful is a Go microservice instrumented using OpenTelemetry to generate traces, but they are sent to the standard output? Not much, I believe. Unless, of course, your observability strategy is centered on SSHing into machines and tailing logs. However, a better strategy is using OpenTelemetry Collector to forward those traces to a compatible observability backend. In this video, I will implement a open telemetry collector executed via Docker to process the traces sent by the Go microservice. I will implement this with the help of Amazon Q Developer. As a heads up, this video is part of a series. If you want to recap what I built so far before watching this video, check in the description below the link for the first episode. Let's get started. So let's start one new conversation uh, with Amazon Q Developer, and this time we're going to use again the DAV feature. So we're going to create a configuration file for a open telemetry collector. This collector must receive traces over the port 5555. The current code of the microservice need microservice needs to send the traces to this end point localhost by 555 so with this prompt let's see what's going to be the plan generated so this is the plan generator. So let's review real quick here so you can have a better idea of how Amazon Q Developer is thinking here. So the first suggestion is to create a YAML file with the collector configuration. So the open, open telemetry collector are implemented using the YAML file. So that makes sense. Um, this is going to be the configuration. That's good. And then there will be exporters, the pipelines, everything seems to be as the way expected. And then there's also recommending some of the changes on the main.go file because the tracer creation needs to be changed to forward those traces to the open telemetry collector right now. So what I'm going to do is to generate the code. So here is our created code. I'm going to click insert code. And as you can see here, it is a smaller list of changes because it is the reflex of what was our prompt. So in, the, in this case, it only needs to create the configuration files and the main.go file. So let's review the implementation. I think that this is always has to be like a, an exercise that you have to do when after accepting the suggestion from an Amazon Q developer. Uh, so the first one is going to be the open talent to collector YAML file. So it was successfully created and it is doing what it's supposed to do, which is configure a receiver over the port 5555. And then it's going to export right now it's exporting to the logging, but uh, uh, we're going to change this later to forward this to uh, AWS X-Ray. But for now, logging, it works fine. And then it's going to implement the pipeline, which is receiver over the OTLP protocol, which is the open telemetry protocol. Uh, it's going to use batching and then export to the logging. All right, so the collector is OK. Let's review now the coding. Uh, there has to be some dependencies that needs to be imported. So I'm going to actually do this now. I'm going to run some go mod tidy to include the dependencies that are missing. So in this case, this OTLP trace gRPC, uh, that's the one. Let's see if it was included. Yep, it was successfully. Only it was not detected by the ID. So as I mentioned before, sometimes you have to force a refresh in your ID to reload the dependencies. All right, let's see if that does the job. And it seems that it did, at least for the dependency level. There is another bug here in our code, which has to do with the context, right? So the context was undefined. So let's see what we can do here. If we are expecting to use a context, who is calling init tracer? So init tracer is being called by here, the main function. So what we can do is effectively provide the context as a parameter. So let's do this now, actually. So we're going to provide the context. So context.context. And then we're going to provide the context as a parameter because we have this object already. So it's here. We're creating from the background. 
And then when we are creating the tracer, we can simply provide it as a parameter. Uh, let's see if that does the trick and it did. So now we have a functional code working. So what we're going to do is to create the Docker compose file that's going to that that's going to be the third step of our implementation approach. So we're going to come up with a strategy to execute our open telemetry collector because here's the configuration file, the YAML file, but we need an engine, something that executes the collector, giving this configuration, right? So for our purposes, we're going to use Docker Compose. So Docker Compose is going to execute, and then we're going to configure Docker Compose to read that file. But here's the trick. We're going to use one more time Amazon Q Developer to create the Docker Compose files configuration for us. To do this, we're going to one more time to the chat, and then we're going to ask another question to Amazon Q Developer, again, using the slash dev feature. So this time, we're going to ask to create a Docker Compose file that is a cute a service for the open telemetry collector giving the configuration file and then let me out oh, so the configuration file is hotel collector config.yaml hotel collector config.yaml and here, one important aspect that has to do with your ability to provide a cohesive prompt to the generative AI engine. So I could just set that and hit enter here, but I want to me I want to make sure that this Docker Compose file is going to use a specific image from Amazon. So Open Telemetry, right? has their own images for the open telemetry collector and you could use them for 99% of the cases. But since our plan, our end game is to use the collector to forward all those traces to AWS X-Ray, only the Amazon image from the open telemetry distribution uh, have that support like built, at least built in. It's not that you cannot use the standard open telemetry collector image, you can. But for those cases, you have to manually add the support for AWS X-Ray. So instead of like having this kind of an extra uh, uh, my work, I'm going to say that it must use Amazon's, not Amazon's, AWS distribution of the hotel collector. So that's going to be... Uh, enough for us to minimize a little bit of the workload. We could, like this is one of the, I'm gonna hit enter while I explain. So this is a, a, a trick, right? When you were using this AI coding tools, either you provide a perfect prompt upfront that's going to minimize a little bit of your work uh, after, or you can break down into multiple interactions that you, you're gonna provide like some back and forth with the chat, right? So you ask a certain things, it's going to generate for you, you are going to realize that something is missing and then you will have to come back and ask to change. This is perfectly doable. This is not necessarily a bad practice, but if you know upfront what are your intentions are, and hopefully <laughs> I think this is going to be the case, it's better for you to be that upfront. So, uh, so here is the execution plan. I'm going to simply generate the code. So let's see what the plan is going to look like. So here is the recommended code. I'm going to once again click on insert code and close the session for now. So let's review what was generated. Uh, the first one is obviously the Docker Compose file. So in this case, it's amazingly using the image that I was expecting it to use. So this is the distribution of AWS for the open telemetry collector. So this is great. Uh, and it is also, as you can see here, providing our configuration file as a perimeter or command, if you will, right? And we're doing the binding of the volume for the local storage, for which is available here in my laptop's disk, to the Docker container uh, persistence layer. So this is good. Um, we might need to take uh, little things here and there later on to provide our credentials, but we can solve that later. For now, Let's just see what is this error that has was detected here on the go.modules file. 
So there are some dependencies here that were created. And I'm going to simply uh, try to solve this with a go mod tidy. Here we go. Yep. Okay, now we've fixed the dependencies of our go mod file and we came back to our functional code that we had before. So, okay. Since we've fixed this problem right now, let's go back to what really matters. So we have a Docker Compose file and then we're going to be able to spin up an execution of the collector that in turn is going to expose this endpoint five, five, localhost 5555. One thing that we didn't check in our code, and just before we do the testing, when it's going to do the init tracer, now it's going to, instead of using to the standard uh, output, is going to forward all the traces to this endpoint localhost 5555. This is our intention. So the flow now is the microservice send the tracers to the collector, and the collector receives this. And right now, the collector is configured to simply flush everything to the log, which is pretty much what the microservice was doing. So now it is going to be the collector that's going to print all this information. Let's test to see if this is actually uh, working. So I'm going to actually leave the logging of the container here. I'm going to I'm going to create another terminal here. I'm going to make an invocation. Actually, first, I need to execute the the microservice, right? So this is the microservice. And then I can simply create another terminal that I'm going to do the invocation of the microservice. So I'm going to use a curl x get. Let me get from the history to avoid typing. So this is the message that was sent to the microservice. And what needs to happen is that this message needs to go to the collector, which is this component over here, all right? Okay, so what seems to be happening here for the microservice is that it's not being able to establish a connection or dial up the connection to this collector. That is interesting. So, you know what? I think I know what's missing here. So let's use Amazon Key Developer one more time for this. So I'm going to use actually a different prompt this time. I'm going to ask how can I expose the, where's the name of the protocol I'm using? The gRPC, the RPC endpoint from the hotel collector to outside the container that executes it. Um, yeah, so that's going to be the prompt that I'm going to use. Let's see how Amazon Q developer are going to help us this time. Because I'm having the feeling that whatever we are doing, we're not doing the rebinding process properly. So it's telling us a little bit of a um, suggestion for how to expose outside a container, put a behind a load balancer, which is a valid practice. But I don't think this is actually our problem here. So I think we need to do actually a different exercise. So I'm going to actually do this. I'm going to copy my entire open telemetry implementation and I'm going to is what we what we call use as a prompt, right? I'm going to send this as a prompt. And then how can I make sure the endpoint is available to all interfaces outside the container it executes. So this time is going to use my code, my configuration as a prompt to recognize what needs to be done, right? So first of all, let's review what needs to be done here. Uh, okay, here's the beginning. Yeah, that's the beginning. So first of all, it needs to specify a port and the mapping. So we're doing this on a Docker level, right? Docker Compose, we're rebinding the port. So that's good. At least we know that we're on the right track. And then finally, the maps container internal port 5555. If we're doing ICS, the key things here. Oh, okay. 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 So here's an interesting feedback from Amazon Q developer. So 
we need to configure the receiver. Receiver is this area here, the component that we're exposing on the collector to use this binding here, 0000, which is maps to all interfaces of the container. So uh, yes, that makes sense. Thank you, Amazon Q developer. That makes perfectly sense because before we were using localhost, so we were not necessarily using all the interfaces from the open telemetry collector container to expose, right? Now we're binding not only the port, but to all available interfaces in the container. I think this is now that going to work. Thank you, Amazon Q developer. So we did a change. Let's do this. Let's bounce the container and then let's execute one more time. DC up minus D. So let's open the logs, D logs minus F. And this is the container. All right. So this is the container running. Let's execute the microservice one more time. Go run main. And let's send one more invocation to our microservice. So uh, curl minus X get. And then here's the invocation that needs to be sent. Yay! The invocation was sent to the microservice and the microservice was able to send to the open telemetry collector. And this is the receiver span that was generated, right? So this is good. We're on track with our observability use case implementation. So now what we need to do is the final step of, all right, everything is working, but now the collector needs to forward this receiver traces to AWS X-Ray. So we're going to use Amazon Q Developer for this one more time. I will continue this series with the next episode where I will use Amazon Q Developer to refactor the Open Telemetry Collector configuration file to send the traces to AWS X-Ray. See you soon, builder.